Hey everybody, welcome to What the Flick and our discussion of Downton Abbey. There's apparently no show that we won't do. And Downton Abbey, <laughs> no, I'm not saying it's not worthy, but man, Alonzo and I watch a lot of television. Yeah, yeah. it's true. Yeah. Uh, and, and more in the weeks to come. More in the weeks to come, yeah. <laughs> so uh, two episodes uh, air uh, to kick things off. Right. So episode, we, episodes we, one and two. We did not cheat and watch the British ones. We're keeping up with the oh, yeah, PBS we, speed of this. So yeah, so it's We've very, not seen the rest of the season yet. Yeah, don't go on to the Downton Abbey Wikipedia page. <laughs> That's a big mistake because you will already see everything. What's all happened? There, okay. In fact, I learned of the Matthews death that way. Oh, way too like early. Couple, really? No, not way too early. The worst possible time, like During two days before it aired, oh, or a day before oh, it aired. Oh man, right? okay, yeah. I, I mean, I knew that, but I'd get you know, I'd forgotten or something, and I'd look through it. And I'm like, wait, he hadn't died. He said, Oh, right. <laughs> um, so. First of all, we were just talking about how, like, if in your DVR, they, they, the number of irritating things that make you want to choke <laughs> everyone at PBS. They don't even call it Downton Abbey. It's called Masterpiece it's Classic. Masterpiece Classic, yes. Yeah, and they don't even put, it's not even Masterpiece Classic colon down there. <laughs> so you so can't even, I can't even, couldn't even find the yeah. fucking show. If your grandmother can't find it in TiVo, that's why. Right, and all of a sudden or I thought. Ben. Right, <laughs> thank you. So... They settled back in very quickly. They six mm. months since uh, Matthew's, Matthew's death, yeah. incredibly abrupt, poorly handled, <laughs> poorly handled <laughs> death exit from the show. But I think they're really doing a good job of sort of milking all the the repercussions of that, not just for Mary and the child, for his, for Mrs. Crawley, even for um, for Molesley, you know, who was his valet and would have presumably been his valet for decades and decades. Suddenly, you know, he's he, he's a Ronin of butlers, you yes, know, he's right. a masterless samurai. When do you um, go with valet and when do you go with valet? Um, like Cary Grant always said valet, and that makes every everybody want to say valet. I think it's a valet if he helps you get dressed and a valet if he parks your car. But That's we've definitely just my heard, but we've de it's not <laughs> wrong to have the person who helps you get dressed called a valet. Like it was, True. It's, we've heard that, right? Yeah, I just I say it the way they say it on the show. No, I, no, I'm no, going to take their word for it because I've never had one. I never will probably. So, you I know. will defer to, to Cary Grant and to you. There you go. Um, <laughs> uh, valet both makes you sound cool and like an asshole simultaneously. <laughs> it's a, not many words do that. So, no, I thought that was good. Like To me, it, it's it, first of all, in a sense... Obviously, they didn't want Matthew to leave the show. Right. He made the decision, and you pointed this out beforehand, like the commitment to doing eight episodes <laughs> every year of Doubt, that was apparently too much for him. It was too much for his career to bear. But that was dull. That was the driving relationship in the show. Mm -hmm. uh, and it had become... There wasn't much. They, you know, like, like, are you going to make him happy, or are they going to keep fighting? Well, yeah, that's it's the the classic Sam and Diane, you right. know, thing of like, okay, well, you're married now. Now, now, what is the drama? Well, you were, you're dead now. There's right, the drama. Right, there's the drama. Right. You're going to make movies. There's your drama. Right. Same thing. Um, so uh, I liked how they were sort of, you know, I thought they dealt very effectively with the emotion, with with how people deal with such tragedy, mm -hmm. such a sudden terrible tragedy. Like, how much easier would it have been? I thought, you know, it's, it's subtle. You know, when people die, they, they die, yet certain tragedies, certain deaths, certain murders, certain situations like murder are, are harder for the people left behind. Sure. You well, know. especially when it's abrupt and you have, you didn't. It's not like somebody older and you saw it coming and you had time to adjust. Not that that's any easier. That once the death happens, you know, it's 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 like a fait accompli. But but certainly in this case, it's it is such a shock. And he was so young, and he has this new baby left behind. What I thought was kind of interesting was how you have Tom Branson in the house, and some in some conversations there's acknowledgement of, oh yes, you went through this too. And then other times where it's just like, oh, you couldn't possibly understand. Yeah, but he's I'm right here. I, my wife died. You know. Yeah. I mean, when uh, when uh, what's the what's Hugh Bonneville's uh, Lord Grantham? When L Lord Grantham is talking to him as they're walking, you know, when he talks about this unspeakable tragedy, we couldn't possibly understand. It sounds like. Oh, I, I, it was your daughter. Yeah, yeah. P.S. Oh. Who died because you were an asshole with the doctor. So, That's right, you know. right. And he's like, oh, yes, of course. <laughs> uh, quite, quite, can, quite, quite. can we take it as a given that Lord Grantham is wrong about everything? I mean, this guy. Always. <laughs> like, the, what I like about him is that he is the, one of the most incompetent characters on television. <laughs> but he is... Um, but he's not, he's not, he, he doesn't mean poor. He's not malicious. He's not he's malicious. Just, he's just terrible at everything <laughs> he does. I mean, he lost his wife's fortune. Right. He lost then his fortune. Yeah. Right. And he would be obviously well on the way of, of losing 
Lord George's fortune <laughs> if he's allowed to manage it. I mean, and I love that how subtle they are because uh, clearly Tom, the, uh, the 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 chauffeur, right? right he chauffeur. Um, <laughs> Tom knows, but he's yeah. not going to be rude. He's like, I cannot have this man making the decisions. <laughs> <laughs> I really need Mary on my side yeah, here. Yeah, he's so clueless. Has there ever been a character less self-aware of their shortcomings? I mean, I guess Grantham? he's he's the symbol of you know this the this 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 creeping kind of inbred aristocracy that is being shoved aside by the sort of you know ambitious working class. You know, because yeah, if it weren't for sort of I guess by the standards of the show sort of middle class uh, uh, Matthew and then obviously working class Tom I mean he would be the, 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 they would they would be selling the castle for tourism I mean there was, right, there's no yeah. way yeah, they'd they would be living in a different mansion but not their mansion <laughs> uh, but interesting though that while he's a symbol for that they have made uh, Maggie Smith like all of a sudden they, they did a, it's a credible turn right. although I'm sure if you watch them straight through like she's different she. Th this is where we're definitely getting the softer side yeah. of, uh, softer, of the Dowager. <laughs> funnier. I mean, yeah. she's always funny, but yeah. I thought that I thought there was a lot of comedy with her uh, in these two episodes. But she's just reasonable. It's like she shrugged her shoulders and thought, "Well, I hate all these change." Like the she. It's like she thought, "The part of me that I don't like about myself hates these changes." But there's clearly something good here, and and she. I mean, she, you know, talking about how she'd send him to the nanny and put him in his bedroom <laughs> without food. I mean, he's a, you know, whatever. He's a 50-year-old man. She's, she is rigorous but pragmatic. Yeah. So I think she realizes that uh, while there's a part of her that's horrified at the, the thought that Lady Mary would be, you know, dealing with the tenants and understanding how the crops work, she, she realizes, she watched her son, like you said, fritter away all these fortunes. Like somebody else needs to be in yeah, charge. You know. fr fritter away these fortunes. Like, did they go? Well, sir, what, what can I do? Yeah. <laughs> There's no way I couldn't stop it at all. But that was very nice when she went up to Lady Mary. That was a nice, sweet mm -hmm. scene. Um, she tries to do right by Mosley, but her butler screws that up. There was a lot of uh, Mosley. Yes. <laughs> yeah. There was a lot of everybody. There yeah. was there's so many plots going on. We haven't even talked about O'Brien not coming back. Right, right, right. <laughs> which they uh, uh, which of course I that I had read. Did you read that? I, I think I think yeah. I hadn't had forgotten yeah. about it, but yeah. Like they, she didn't even come back to like leave the letters. Like that was clearly some stand in, you know. Oh, totally. Just yeah. Skulkily yeah. leaving letters on, on mantelpieces and making off in the night. But I mean, thank God to me O'Brien's gone. Not just because she was a sinister, but I can't bear how much I, I, look, I can bear it all. I like the show. <laughs> but how ridiculously sinister O'Brien and Thomas are, mm. right? And that people have discovered it. And then three episodes later, they're like, oh, Thomas has told me something in confidence. It must be true. <laughs> no, for the love of God, it's not true. You already established it. Well, Thomas had an interesting role there where suddenly we found ourselves feeling sorry for him for the first for time bit, yeah. because, you know, like that he was maybe going to go to jail for being gay or whatever. And then in the Christmas special, he gets beaten up on behalf of the other guy. So they've sort of mended their fences. Who did he get? Who, who took the, who did he take punches for? For oh, the guy, the one Jimmy. who, Jimmy, right. yes, for Jimmy, who had the crush on who, who, uh, who Bates or O'Brien made him think, you know, returned right. his feelings. Right. But then he's back to his old things and he turns in the nanny yeah. for nothing except it turns, it turns out, out he's right. Yes. <laughs> he's right. He doesn't even know he was right. The stop the, the stop clock that's right twice a day, that's you know. Right. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so but now we've got Edna back and she used the one who obviously has eyes for Tom Branson and, and, and is, is is sort of upsetting the apple cart. And so now the two of them, she's gonna be the new O'Brien and she and Thomas are gonna be all <laughs> you know now, I thought right, she's I mean they just she just moves right moves right into that yeah. role and she's obviously set up Anna for a fall. Right. Um, but I mean what's frustrating is how dumb Lord and Lady Grantham are. I mean, they are oh dumb God. as freaking posts. <laughs> yeah. And oddly, they're the the both the mothers are so much more keenly aware <laughs> of the world around them. Right. True. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, not both their mothers, but yeah, I mean, Mrs. Crawley, Mrs. And, Crawley and the Dowager, and, and, and yeah, the Dowager yeah. right? Um, because I mean, they buy it every time from these people. <laughs> every time it is fucking maddening to me. Uh, you know, and the, but that said, I loved Elizabeth McGovern. I loved the quick dismissal of the nanny. Oh yeah, that yeah. was that was, that was good stuff. Yeah, you do not mess with with uh, with with the grandkids. What did she say to the, the to the to the to the chauffeur's kid? 
uh, so like you, it's a half breed yeah, or yeah, something. Half like, breed. It's like you a, go back to sleep, you have. Yeah. <laughs> it's like was that about being half Irish or about being half non aristocrat? I don't know what that I was. I feel like but it was non aristocrat. Yeah. I feel like because she cared so much when she was talking to Thomas about. True. It's not the same, you know. Now I'm going upstairs. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah, that's true. She's she's pretty pretentious. Yeah. But of uh, course, Thomas like is consumed with the idea that anyone is going to treat him like a servant, and like I, I guess even the his employers half the time. But you know. Yeah, he's a he's a character. I mm. love the. I, I did enjoy the music. Um, my wife fell asleep, so I, I watched twenty minutes of it again this morning. The mm -hmm. last twenty minutes, and uh, like they have a certain kind of music that says pointless mischief is happening. You know, <laughs> like good natured mischief, like like uh, Bates uh, creating the card so that oh, Mosley right. can get money and not know it. They have this little doo doo. Somebody's up to something, <laughs> but it's not evil. <laughs> <laughs> Relax. Right. Yeah. The, 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 I think the sitcomiest moment of last night was uh, uh, Lady Rose dressing as a maid yeah. to talk to the gardener guy, and you you you, you think okay. The, I'll, I'll allow it, Downton Abbey, because you you put it in the context of this show where there's a mix between upstairs and downstairs that I'm sure never existed. You know, like they probably took like the one instance of any sort of crossover familiarity in the entire history of right. British aristocracy and put it all in this house. You That's know, right. um, I thought the whole thing with uh, you know with, with Bates and Lady, sorry, with with Mr. Carson and Lady Mary was interesting. Where he tries to talk to her, and at first she like mm -hmm. she she plays the you know the Lady card, and then right. like kind of she dials resets it the back. Rules. Yes, yeah. <laughs> and then you knew she'd apologize. Yeah. that's a nice relationship that I didn't think they sabotage. Um, I, I wonder whether you. you I, I mean, I think you're right, and obviously there's much more mixing. But it's strange that, that like, unlike upstairs, wasn't upstairs downstairs in London? Yeah. Right. So, to me, that makes it more likely that there would be very little connection because these people have other worlds with which to interact with people um. in their worlds. But these guys are like. No. Match of the year. I mean, they're super isolated. I mean, they talk to the people, they talk to the downstairs people, or they talk to no one. <laughs> right. Like, so that it seems like over time, because it's this, I mean, it's this weird, totally fake economy. <laughs> like, it, I mean, they just employ them to employ them to keep serving them. With, you know, I don't know. But anyway, it, so it seems more likely that there'd be inbreeding. Fair enough. In, I, uh, I suppose so. Do we care about Rose, Lady Rose? I I, you know, I can't decide if she's the cousin Oliver of this show or what the deal is. I, I think she is the conduit for the 1920s, basically. Yeah, right. She's the flapper, she's you flapper, know. Yeah. Um, so I, I guess she's going to kind of keep things interesting. And, and I'm sure after Lady Sybil got killed off, they decided they needed a young hot babe. Um, I think that it seems to me the Rose Jimmy romance is potentially set up. I mean, they ran into each other dancing. And then he came outside and saw her, and she was like, not a word. Hmm. So that maybe, and she's obviously excited by, you know, dating somebody downstairs. Oh, God. I don't know. I, you know, after uh, th that was handled so well with the chauffeur. I don't want them to, this, to become a regular thing where, like, they're yeah. marrying off the staff. That just seems, that just, that, that, that's like, once I'll buy it. But, but Jimmy's a dick, too. Like, you know. Jimmy is, uh, is not reliable and, and a bit of a cad, yeah. A um, bit of a cad. <laughs> you were required to say that about somebody in another show, in an American show. Oh, fair <laughs> enough. Yeah, just, um, He's a roué and a blackguard. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I thought that that was the woman who made out with Lord Grantham in the closet. No, 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 no. She's the, no, Edna is the one who... Uh, on the Christmas special, when everybody's up in Scotland, she is like chatting up Tom Branson and trying to make him feel guilty about being all fancy and upstairs when he used to be a downstairs guy. And and as 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 uh, Mrs. Um, uh, Hughes, bless her heart, who's yeah, the greatest the character best, on the, the show, best, the best. Uh, basically said like you know she made you she made you ashamed of yourself when you know you've done nothing to be ashamed of. Right. So she's back. So it'll be interesting I to see. Remember that. So did they did they kiss? I can't remember if they guess she did walk in on him shirtless, right. which was an unforgettable moment. But I don't remember if they kissed I, or not. I, I beg to differ. I because uh, <laughs> I clearly, I've clearly <laughs> completely forgot. Uh, I will be curious to see what happens when those two cross paths again. They have not yet. 
Um, but yeah, the only reason that she even has the glowing recommendation for Mrs. Hughes was because Tom Branson asked her to write it for her. Right, right, As right. a favor, you know, never realizing that she would come back and use it at Downton. So. Right, right, right. So she's obviously significant, uh, she's significant trouble. Everything Tom does is, I mean, right now, the guy can do no wrong. I mean, even... Even in how he's handling, you know, making her sit there. I mean, he's like the least sexist guy in 1922 ever. Well, he's super progressive. I mean, yeah. he's like all, he's a he's a socialist and, yeah. you know, everything. So, yeah, I would see him being like a proto-feminist type. And I, I love Lady Mary's entrance to the luncheon where that's she great. has graduated from mourning to plum. Plum, that's right, yeah. <laughs> you know, I thought she was just going to come in. Uh, like as soon as they sat down, I was I went forward. I'm like, I'm like, Lady Mary's coming in and she's going to have the colorful scarf on. <laughs> I, thought, I thought it was just going to be the shit. Black she, dress with a dress. But she went. She went full. She went full uh, plum dress. Yeah, you know, it was six months. That's plenty of time. No, I think for time. Oh, and then Lady Edith. Uh, what, I, you know, did, I, I sense that no good can come of this because she always gets the fuzzy end of the lollipop, as Marilyn Monroe says. His hair is too good for him to be a good character. <laughs> um, it, it screams villain. Yeah, it screams something <laughs> that he's going to do something here, or that, that maybe he's not trying to get divorced, that he just wants to... This is just an opportunity to have sex with a 21-year-old. Uh, I don't know. It doesn't seem like it. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know where this is going to go. But yeah, certainly uh, taking on German citizenship in 1922, that's just, that seems troublesome somehow. But eventually the Brits would come to forgive the Germans. <laughs> <laughs> and, then and then everything would be fine. Yeah. Um, all right. So uh, we're... Uh, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm into it. I'm in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're just getting started on season three. So. Um, all right, guys. Thank you. <laughs>